and of your Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And be with your spirit. And your brothers and sisters, my um, dear uh, brother priest, Archbishop. Foremost in my mind uh, today is one of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to Almighty God for sharing the gift of the priesthood of Christ with me. And uh, our Lord of Christ for joining with me in this 50th day of my ordination. And I will also thank those people who have journeyed with me, those who have helped me along the way uh, achieve this uh, milestone in my life. And so as we gather together to celebrate the sacred mystery, let us first call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come to us in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Father, 
who by no merits of my own, chose me for communion with the eternal priesthood of your Christ and for the ministry of the church. Grant that I may be an ardent yet gentle preacher of the gospel and a faithful steward of your mysteries. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. second letter to Timothy. To Timothy, my dear child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, as I remember you constantly in my prayers, night and day. I yearn to see you again, recalling your tears, so that I may be filled with joy as I recall your sincere faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and that I am confident lives also in you. For this reason, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with a strength that comes from God. He saved us and called us to a holy life, not according to our works, but according to his own design and the grace bestowed on us in Christ Jesus before time began, but now made manifest through the appearance of our Savior Christ Jesus, who destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing in our responsorial psalm, Psalm 92. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you.
This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, I've known a priest for half a century. <laughs> that is, for 50 years. And I have no regrets for becoming a priest this long. They were not without any hurdles of some kind, like disappointments, tiredness, and stresses along the way. That is why St. Paul in today's first reading, looking with much paternal care at Timothy, his close associate in a ministry, wished to give him a fatherly challenge when he said, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying of my hands. St. Paul must have sensed that Timothy was getting tired, or discouraged, or maybe overwhelmed by the daunting sense of responsibility that accompanied the call of God to the ministry. So from a distance, St. Paul needed to encourage his co-worker and the missionary journeys to rekindle the gift of his priesthood. <clears throat> My friends, I am celebrating this great milestone of my priestly journey, not because I am tired, not because I am discouraged or overwhelmed by the responsibilities of my vocation, but first and foremost to give thanks to God for sharing with me the gift of the priesthood of His Son Jesus Christ, the eternal High Priest. As I look back to 50 years ago, or even to my seminary days, when I started as a young 12-year-old boy, fresh from grammar school, I kept on wondering how I survived my 12 years of seminary formation. We started with 23 classmates in the first year. Then we were down to 15 after graduating high school. About seven of us came back for college and philosophy, but only four proceeded to theology, and only three got ordained on April 30, 1972. Of the three who got ordained in 1972, one passed away in, the Paris, in his Paris assignment in San Diego. So that leaves just two of us, Father Corso and myself. And about two or five years, four or five years ago, Father Corso opted for an early retirement. So that leaves just me, still in active ministry. <laughs> I keep thinking and reflecting about the fact that among my classmates that left and did not persevere, I believe some of them were much smarter and more worthy of, than me. 
I guess I'm still learning the fact that people care less about how much you know until they know how much you care. And Jesus says in today's gospel reading, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. I was trained into the priesthood during the transition period from the rigidity of the Free Vatican II era to the sweeping changes of Vatican II. So part of my formation, I experienced the Eucharistic celebrations of priests facing their backs to the people. Then came the dramatic changes in the liturgy of the Eucharist, which introduced the use of the, ver of the vernacular and the emphasis on the richness of the sacred scriptures or on personal reflections to nourish the growth in our spiritual lives. Redefining the role of the lady in the life of the, of the church was of paramount importance in the development of theology of the priesthood of Jesus Christ. Seminary formation was never structured to better prepare those studying for the priesthood to respond to the demands and the new expectations of the present times. This goes to say that the priesthood is not a frozen entity, an unchangeable state, and it never was in the first place. For the priestly ministry from the first century in Jerusalem to the 21st century world is a constant story of change. Different models of the priesthood were developed with varying emphasis and new ways of serving the people of God. We went through the times of the jurisdictional model of the priesthood where the priest holds the respected position of teaching authoritative doctrine as a matter of obedience. We used to see the priest as primarily the performer of sacred rites and the cultic model. We used to think of the priest as a holy person, withdrawn from the world and all its vanities and the monastic model. We used to see the priest as primarily as the proclaimer of God's word, an inspiring cause for people's conversion like hellfire and damnation preachers in the prophetic model. But now the new priesthood has evolved into the pastoral model, to the likes of Jesus the Good Shepherd, where the priest is a community leader, a presider, an organizer. It brings his people together, joining with them in their, in their joys and their struggles and in their pains and activating their gifts and charisms for the building up of Christ's church. As Pope Francis in one of his Holy Thursday homilies, he spoke openly of the tiredness of the priest, of something positive, because it comes from being in the midst of his people, bearing the smell of the shame. As you see, the priesthood is never a frozen entity or a static state because Christ's mission to his church is not to an abstract humanity but to a concrete world, to a living and vibrant people with their loves and hates, with their strengths and weaknesses, with their needs, frustrations and emptiness. And the new priesthood must develop new responses to the first demands of the signs of the times, even to the unfamiliar fuels and confusions of the present age. But in spite of all the odds, these past 50 years of my priesthood have given me ample reason to rejoice and celebrate. 
Certainly, there were ups and downs over the course of the years. With its very challenges, demands, and frustrations, but by the grace of God, unworthy though I am, I have survived and still surviving. That is why I am celebrating this golden anniversary of my priestly ordination, not only as an opportunity for me and for all priests to think back on the amazing journeys we have had with God's help over the years, beginning with the invitation and the discernment leading to accepting a call to the priesthood, but also a time to give thanks, first and foremost to God, for blessing me and sharing with me the gift of my priesthood, to my deceased parents, for their daily prayers and sacrifices for my perseverance in this long and tedious road. To the members of my family who have encouraged me over the years, and to the many good and wonderful people in my various parish assignments who have supported me and prayed for me along the way. To the Archbishops and Bishops of the East Archdiocese of San Francisco, and particularly to our dear Archbishop Salvatore Cordelion, who have trusted me with various assignments that I have had, and to my brother priests for their friendship, camaraderie, and solidarity in our common mission. To God, be all glory. Amen. Amen. We gather as a people who believe in the risen Christ. And so with confidence, let us now turn to God and our needs as we pray. Risen Lord, you gave your apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. Inspire all church leaders, Pope Francis, bishops and priests to proclaim your word faithfully. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the light of our risen Christ may illumine the minds and hearts of the leaders of nations to always open the avenues for peace in our world, especially for the people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Christians throughout the world who are persecuted for the faith, that they may be freed from fear and anxiety and be strengthened in their courageous witness to our risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Domi, as he celebrates the 50th anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, that Jesus the High Priest will continue to renew, increase, and strengthen in him the grace of his priestly ordination. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Father Doming's 50 years of, of service to the church will be a source of inspiration for all priests and awaken in our young people their own call to service in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the dead who rest in Christ, especially Father Doming's deceased parents, Pablo and Adela, and his sister, Constancia, that they will enter into the fullness of our risen Lord's victory over death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the many blessings on your people, for the gift of the ordained priesthood. We ask you to continue to bless all priests, a faithfully minister to your people each day. 
May your generosity be alive and inspire us to always say yes to your call, to love and serve each according to the plan you have for our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing to God, our Almighty Father. We offer the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, for the deepening of our service of you, so that what you have conferred on us, unworthy as we are, you may graciously bring to fulfillment through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, at his command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, himself to bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim. By his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on this constant intercession, in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church of hell with your servant Francis our Pope, Salvatore our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Today we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. together pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our risen Savior be always with you. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. by his dying and rising has given us new life. Happy are we who are called now to partake at his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word in my soul.
Let us pray. For the glory of your name, O Lord, I joyfully celebrated the mystery of faith to mark the anniversary of my priestly ordination, so that I may be in truth what I have handled mystically and this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is a quick reminder for those who have reserved seats at the Weston in Burlingame that we will gather there for dinner tonight for those who have reserved seats there. Thank you very much. I'd like to also to thank our, uh, our choir for enhancing our liturgy today. And, uh, celebration last weekend and uh, I'd like to thank all of you who are here joining with us uh, at the celebration of my priestly ordination and uh, particularly to our Archbishop you know in his busy schedule he is with us <laughs> or my brother priest who are with me in this uh, great celebration my golden jubilee and uh, most of all I'd like to thank who uh, has been really committed to this Paris for since the foundation of this Paris mm -hmm. brother Doug Draper mm -hmm. I'd also like to thank uh, my priest in the house Father Gabriel and Father Ray joining me in this uh, celebration, of course, um, our Paris Deacon, uh, Deacon Mike Giorso. I'd <laughs> thank uh, also uh, those who are here from South Bay or there, and my family from Vancouver. And, uh, join me in this celebration. The Lord be with you. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer in you the gift of redemption and of adoption, and give you gladness by his blessings. Amen. 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 May by his work, giving work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, May you make your ears to an inher eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you have already risen with Christ and baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. The blessings of Almighty God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord through your life. Amen.